Welcome to Just Some Guy Trading with 2021 World Champion Trader, Kevin McCormick. Welcome back to Just Some Guy Trading with Kevin McCormick. This is my weekly trader's outlook for June 3rd. This week, we don't have a lot of uh, markets that I think are very well set up for us. So we're going to be taking a deep dive into the S&P 500, NASDAQ, and soybean meal. I know many of you are out there like to look at the energy markets. I don't like anything in the energy markets right now. Crude oil, natural gas. You know, sometimes the best thing to do is not to trade. We don't need to force ourselves into anything. With that said, let's get started. As always, this presentation is for educational purposes only. All right. As many of my viewers know, I am a big fan of the presidential cycle when it comes to the S&P 500. And now that May is over, I've updated my chart, and now we're taking a look at June. Uh, if you go back and take a look at my report to start the month of May, I said I thought we probably were going to be having a flat May. Plenty of trading opportunities in the month of May, but for the S&P 500, we ended up just up a half a percent. So pretty flat. But what does that mean for June? June is about a winner about 65% of the time. But when we have a, when we've had bad Junes, six out of those eight times, we've had a positive May before it. So that makes me think that we're probably setting up for a pullback in June, which aligns with some of the technicals we're gonna jump into in the chart here. So, that's what we're looking at with the presidential cycle. June is a coin flip of a month, but since we had a positive May, we're more likely to have a negative June. All right, now let's jump into the charts, starting with the S&P 500. All right, starting off, taking a look at the S&P 500. I'm not going to show the COT report today, but I'm going to let everybody know that the hedge funds continued to short the S&P 500 based on the COT report that came out on Friday. But one thing I wanna highlight is the COT report does not include data from this move we had on Friday around the jobs report, which I think this big rally was triggered a little bit by short covering when the jobs report didn't come out in favor of the shorts. With that said, the only thing that has been holding me back from shorting the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ has been the enormous short position by the hedge funds out there. If you recall two weeks ago and in my special report, I discussed when this 13 hit that everyone was gonna be looking at 4,200 area as the resistance. And if we break out to, above that, all the talking heads were gonna say you know, we had our confirmed breakout, but I highlighted our resistance levels actually up here at these old highs. And I thought we would reach them by the end of May. And by golly, on Friday with that rally, we almost hit it. Um, you know, it's June 2nd, wasn't the end of May, but we're up in this area now, which is why I think we're setting up for a correction heading into next week or sometime in the month of June. This 13 is still live here. We've got a couple days left on that. Typically speaking, when it comes to the 13s, we're looking for a reaction uh, within 12 bars. So S&P 500, we're hitting into this area of resistance that I had called for two weeks ago. I think this is where the rally is going to stop and we might wanna start taking and looking for short signals in the S&P 500. But as everyone has mentioned in the media, this rally has been enormous in the tech industry. And that's where most of the gains for the year are. If we've been consolidated in about seven stocks. So let's take a look at the NASDAQ, starting with the QQQ. So if we take a look at the QQQ, you can see here that this same 13 and nine that we had uh, back here is still in play, but we broke through this resistance level and it was a confirmed breakout, which is interesting. And we're now sitting on a combo 11 in the QQQ. What does that mean? That means if we got two more days up, that we'd actually get another 13, which could then be highlighting the top in the QQQ. When I was doing this report two weeks ago, I thought we were, maybe I was trying to thread the needle a little too much. I'm not looking and waiting around for another confirmed 13 here. 
Um, I think that this market is set up for a pullback. But before we get into that, let's take a quick look at the NASDAQ futures contract here. And you'll see here using aggressive combo uh, opposed to the standard combo. And I use combo version 1B for anyone that's curious out there. The aggressive combo uh, was designed more for markets that trade 24 hours a day. So the futures market in the NASDAQ trades 23 hours a day. You'll see here, we actually did trigger a 13 on May 30th in the NASDAQ futures using the aggressive combo settings I have in place right now with a little bit of upside still there, but we could go all the way back down to you know almost 1300 in the NASDAQ as a possible correction. Um, so for everyone out there, we've got the presidential cycle highlighting that you know June could be tough for us. We could have a pullback. We have multiple technical indicators showing that this rally is losing its strength and it is just logical and healthy for the market at this point to have a pullback. So starting next week, I'm going to be looking for and taking sell signals in the NASDAQ and the S&P 500. Let's finish up by taking a look at soybean meal. All right, we have the chart for soybean meal up here. You can see we've been in a steady downturn uh, going back to started in March, but I think we're trying to form a bottom here in soybean meal. Uh, if we can hold this low, that'd be a great sign. But right now you can see we moved into the overbought area in the Williams percent R. So pullback is expected at this time. We're hitting into those areas of resistance. This trend line has held perfectly basically since March and has been great to sell off of. So we need to have a confirmed breakout first, but we have multiple indicators, including uh, DeMarc 13s indicating that we have seller exhaustion. But let's jump into a few of the Williams indicators, starting with the COT report. Here you'll see the COT report that we have heavy commercial buying of soybean meal into this decline while the large funds and hedge funds have been liquidating their longs. This has been a great indicator for buying opportunities in the past. As you can see here, this one was a great buying opportunity, good buying opportunity. Um, and this is always the problem with the COT report is commercials buy for a long time. So this time period here, you had COT buying commercial buying the entire time until finally the bottom was in and we had this enormous rally. But keep this in mind, this happened mid-October, October 15th, 2021. Keep that date in mind because we're going to come back to it. In addition to the COT report, we have soybean meal is undervalued compared to gold, the dollar, and the 30-year bond. From a seasonal perspective, you know, we're supposed to be rallying right now. The seasonals have not been working very well uh, for soybean meal in the grain complex this year. But the best part of it all is everyone knows that I love the pinch punch or ADX indicator for calling bottoms. And you'll see here that we have crossed above 40, indicating that a bottom should be in soon for soybean meal. We have not got our stochastic cross yet. But that's what I'm waiting for. Like I said, I'm looking for a confirmed signal that the bottom has been made in soybean meal. But as I said before, COT report along with DeMarc indicators, ADX calling the bottom. And then when did this happen before? Oh, right here. Remember I said, remember 1015? We moved above 40 back then. This is where you saw in that COT report, commercial buying this entire time down. And when ADX crossed above 40, we reached our bottom and we took off and had this enormous rally in soybean meal. So right now, I don't think the bottom is in specifically, but I want everybody out there to know I'm watching soybean meal for a confirmed bottom and upside breakout, similar to what we got in lean hogs last week, a great 10% rally in one week. That's much more than I was expecting, but it was great to be in that trade and hit those profits. So for everybody out there, I'd be keeping an eye on soybean meal to form a bottom here next week or the following week. 
And then be careful with your long positions in the stock market. I think we're set up for a correction to start the month of June. This week's report was short and sweet because I don't see a lot of great setups out there. But thank you for watching as always. And remember to like and subscribe so you always find out when my new content comes out.